We are Trent and Allie, and building a house without any experience in the middle of a pandemic has been a wild ride. Siding, roofing, <laughs> insulation, lumber, everything to build a house basically is in short supply and high demand and it's causing all kinds of issues. But even though we're running into problems on the build, today we're finally bringing our old girl home. It's an uphill battle, literally. The sharp right hand corner we have to take right here and it's really gravelly and really gnarly. Oh, see, this is Pamela's biggest problem. But even with some major setbacks, the real problem is the drywall. We had an issue yesterday. We are loving the silver lining. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Hello. How are ya? How are you? We're so excited. Yay! <laughs> Good morning, guys. The very best thing about today is we're not actually working on the house. I am really excited to do something a little bit different. We are actually gearing up to bring back our most beloved family member that we haven't seen in quite a while. It's gonna be great. <laughs> So this family member has been with us almost the longest. I think probably the only thing that's been with us longer is Frank. And it's really exciting because the roads are actually in good enough shape that we can bring her home. We don't have to worry about her getting stuck or not making it up the mountain to our house. Just like a, it's a bittersweet trip down memory lane every time I get into Pamela. <laughs> oh, we're taking Pamela home, and I could not be more excited. There's a couple minor fixes that we need to work on with Pamela. There's a slow leak in one of her tires that Trent is filling up right now. There's a couple recalls on the engine and stuff that we need to take to the dealership to have them repair. And there's just a couple technical things that we need to spend some time on and get back to working order before we can take her out on another adventure, which I'm sure will happen on another day. But for today, we're just focused on getting her back home. All right, so if uh, you guys caught our video when we went down to Moab in the van, we do have some repairs. Fires right up. We have the water pump that actually needs to be replaced. I have the spare water pump. I just didn't have the proper tools to do it. So now that we can get the van up at our house, it'll be much easier to uh, get it in tip top running shape. Like Ali said earlier, it does need to go to the dealership and have a couple of recalls done on it. And the back tire has a slow leak. So we either have to keep continually pumping it up or we need to take it to a tire shop and get it fixed. But as for right now, we're gonna hit the road and see if uh, Pamela can even make it to our house in good conditions. There are some steep gravelly roads, which has been Pamela's uh, pretty much her absolute nemesis is steep gravelly roads so we'll see if she can do it so crazy how all i have to do is sit in this driver's seat and the second i start driving it immediately just floods my mind with all these memories of central and south america and all the ups and downs and the good and the bad and the exciting and the scary like just all the different things that happened in this van that really have like shaped Allie and I into the people that we are and that's it's just like something that I'm so grateful for and it's been such an amazing experience and I'm like almost so sad that we don't take the van places and we don't live in the van every day and it's like I guess it's just one of the growing pains of life and, and things change and you always look back and you miss things in the past but i'll never forget what we got to do in this van and, and the things that we accomplished i mean we drove all the way to the very bottom tip of south america ushuaia in argentina and that's a huge accomplishment no matter who you are where you're coming from 
that's something that I'm really glad that we got to do. Pamela is doing amazing. We just made it up two of the big, like, really gravelly washboarded out switchbacks that it was actually the first little hurdle that I was worried about. Pamela crushed it. We have all this anxiety about the van being able to make it up like steep gravelly roads because I think it was Costa Rica was the first place where we just tried to go up a deep like like dirt and gravel road to go visit a friend that we had made and let's just say Pamela did not make it. We ended up having to get towed up that like steep dirt gravelly road just to like make it up to our friend's house. And not only was that embarrassing and frustrating, but just really sad. And uh, now Pamela has a little bit bigger, a little bit wider tires, so she does handle the roads and the dirt a little bit better. Pamela's doing great. Well, I would say we're probably about a little over halfway there, and we only have uh, one more little gnarly section that I'm worried about being able to make it up coming right up. All right, so here's the culprit. There's this sharp right-hand corner we have to take right here, and it's really gravelly and really gnarly. Yeah, baby! Probably doesn't look like much on camera, and honestly, I probably did a really bad job of filming that corner right there. But it's super deep gravel, and when trucks and stuff start turning around it, uh, it gets really rutted out, and like the beginning of the season, it's not in that bad of shape, but the van being front wheel drive and having to pull the rear tires through the ruts and up the hill where it's really gravelly can be really gnarly. And also, this road is really washboarded and really gnarly so it's really noisy and I apologize for that. We're in the home stretch baby. All right well we made it to our driveway. Now we've just got to make it up here around the shelter logic and over by the Starlink without getting stuck or any problems like that. And since it's not muddy and the ground is rather dry and hard. I don't think we're gonna have any issues, or I hope anyhow. And there's a perfect little spot right here. Just gotta narrowly miss the shelter logic. Oh man. Uh, see, this is Pamela's biggest problem. Let's see if I can back us out of this. Oh boy. doing we made it oh my gosh it is the most unlevel parking job i've ever seen out of well, pamela what do you want me to do it weighs as much as a killer whale <laughs> it's like loose unpacked dirt that's like a little bit wet underneath so as soon as i drive into it it just sinks eventually we will regrade and flatten out this little parking spot area next to the shelter logic for now I'm just excited that she made it home. <laughs> All right, so now that we've accomplished the task of getting Pamela up here to her resting place next to Terry and next to Rusty, we have to take a little trip down into the valley because we gotta go to my grandma's house. And I know a lot of you guys are probably excited to see my grandma, but today you won't be. Today is just a day of non-stop action, and even though we're not working on the house, there's so much else in our life that I feel like we let kind of fall to the wayside because we're so focused on getting this house built quickly 
Um, but today we have a couple reasons why we have to be in the valley and that is giving us a good excuse to get the rest of our life in order a little bit. So a lot of people have been telling us for a really long time that they've been having trouble getting appliances because of the pandemic and all of the other shortages. You guys already know, siding, roofing, insulation, drywall, lumber, everything to build a house basically is in short supply and high demand and it's causing all kinds of issues. So we had people months ago telling us, hey guys, it's taken us six months to get the appliances for our house. And so we were like, we don't want that to happen to us. So what we did was we ordered all of our kitchen appliances way back in February. It's now almost June. Now, most of the appliances had already showed up at my grandparents' house, but our dishwasher and our cooktop they said, oh, it'll be there in two weeks. Well, guess what? When two weeks came, the day before it was scheduled to be delivered, they would say, hey guys, another two weeks. The day before it was scheduled to be delivered, hey guys, another two weeks. And like, <laughs> after three months of them extending every two weeks, we were like, uh, are, are these things ever gonna show up? Well, guess what? Last night, they didn't say, hey guys, another two weeks. We're standing there, you bravely All right, so we just made it to my grandparents' house, and like I said, you're not gonna see my grandma or my grandpa because my grandma, who is 90 years old, actually has an older sister that I think is 93. I, I can't remember, but they're both really, really old, and my grandma's sister lives in Oregon, and she never gets to see her, and so my mom and my sister and all my sister's kids took my grandparents on a little road trip, yes, two 90-year-old people on a road trip for multiple days all the way up to Oregon to see my grandma's sister. And I think that when they get together, they are just like two little peas in a pod. It's the most adorable thing ever. But there's basically nobody here at my grandparents' house right now. By the time this video airs, this will have happened like a month ago. But as of right now, nobody is here. And we're here to kind of keep an eye on the house and keep an eye on the front yard because supposedly the rest of our appliances are getting delivered today and we're really, really excited about it. I'm excited to do some laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma's not here to help with the laundry and to fold the laundry, but Allie is more than capable and my grandma probably doesn't want us using her washing machine when she's not here, but we're just gonna do one little small load. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? We're so excited. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you guys so Thank you. much. You're welcome. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> This is the last pieces of the appliances that we need for our kitchen, and I could not be more relieved that it showed up before we need it. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it's gonna have to hang out for a minute before we take it up to our house, but we've got everything. Okay, so now we have fridge, dishwasher, oven, cooktop, and microwave. We haven't had a microwave in like five years, so this is really exciting for us. Thank you for being a Home Depot customer. <laughs> Anytime, Home Depot. <laughs> all right, so now that all of our appliances have showed up, we even got Terry up to the property. No, nope. we're gonna, Pamela. Uh, uh, Pamela. All these ladies around here, you know. <laughs> uh, we're just gonna kind of kick back and relax at my grandparents' house, take in the luxuries of a finished home, let the dogs run around in the grass in the backyard. And we'll probably see you guys in the morning. What's up guys and good morning. We had an amazing night's sleep last night. Didn't we Frank? Yeah. Lika slept through the night which was a huge relief. We got a nice solid eight hours of sleep. I'm energized, I'm ready to hit the ground running, ready to get building on the house. But before we do so, I wanted to let you guys know today's video is sponsored by Omaze. 
and Omaze is actually giving away an Airstream Caravelle and a brand new F-150 Lariat. So we actually love working with Omaze. Not only are they donating a lot of money to a lot of good community organizations, but they're giving away these awesome prizes. So last month, the winner was Robert from Charleston, West Virginia, and he won a fully converted Sprinter van. And I'm sure he is super excited about it, but this time, you guys can win the F-150. This thing's got the EcoBoost. It's a twin turbo V6. It's got like 400 horsepower, and you get to pull the Caravelle Airstream. So for your chance to win the Airstream Caravelle and the Ford F-150 and also support a great cause, the Independence Fund, click the link in our description or go to omaze.com slash Trent Alley. Thanks again to Omaze for sponsoring today's video. I'm going to finish my coffee and then Ali, I, and Frank and Lika are going to get inside and get to work. If you guys have been following along for the majority of this build, you've probably seen that along the timeline, there's been a lot of ups and downs. This morning, Brandon has two young children and one of them needs to go to the doctor. And they were saying that he's having trouble breathing, which sounds a lot like COVID. And Allie's pregnant and we don't want to expose her to anything that could maybe damage the baby or maybe give her a fever or cause any issues. So we told Brandon, don't come up, um, see what's going on with, uh, with your son, Connor. And also we do want to make sure that Brandon's kids are okay. So if Brandon needs to stay home and take care of the kids, that's totally fine as well. The problem that that presents is I can't do this insulation on my own. It, it takes two people hey. and Allie can't do it either. Come on. We'll say it's cause she's pregnant, <laughs> but anyway. The real problem is the drywall. Do you want to tell them about what happened yesterday? Uh, we had an issue yesterday. All right, so we've been trying to work with a company, LKL. They are a really big drywall distributor <laughs> in the area. I called a week ago and I placed an order or, or I tried to get a quote from their sales rep. And he took down all of my information and then he said, I'll call you. He didn't give me a quote number. He didn't give me his name. And I thought it was kind of odd. So then maybe three days later, I called back and I was like, hey, I was just curious if I could get that quote back. And the girl said, well, who was your salesman? And I was like, I don't know, he didn't give me his name. And she said, well, what was your quote number? I was like, he didn't give me a quote number. He didn't give me anything. She's like, okay, let me try to figure out who it is. And so she came back and she said, uh, they said that it, it takes about a week to get a quote back. She also didn't give me any information. So I said, okay. So I waited for about five days called back again. I talked to a gentleman and he said, well, who was your sales rep? And I was like, he didn't give me his name. And he's like, well, what was your quote number? And I was like, they didn't give me a quote number. So he eventually tracked down using my name. So he said, oh, I found out that was your sales rep. And he said to take down your name and your phone number and he'll call you back. So I wait for two days. I don't get a call from I try to call two times in one day and I can't get through to this guy. So in his voicemail, it says to give him a call on his cell phone. So I call his cell phone, can't get through. The voicemail of his cell phone says to text him. So I finally text him. This has been like eight or nine days since I placed this order. And we're working on tight deadlines on this house. I text him and yesterday he has the audacity to text me back and say, hello, sir. My management has told me that I cannot fulfill your order because we're in a drywall shortage and we have to give all the drywall that we have to our contractors and that we can't take care of customers like you. So needless to say, I'm really irritated. I'm very upset. And now I guess we're probably just gonna have to get drywall from Home Depot because we were planning on LKL delivering the drywall up here to our house and now we're gonna have to deliver it ourselves, which is gonna be a huge pain in the butt. And really, I'm just mad that when I called the first day, this guy couldn't say, oh, hey, sorry, if you're not a contractor, we can't fulfill your order because there's a shortage. He just said, okay, I'll call you back. So I feel like he had no intention of fulfilling this order, and he basically just pushed our drywall out an extra week. So I'm upset. We do need some exterior foam and so I think that's what Allie and I are going to do today. We're going to go and buy more exterior foam at Home Depot, bring it back up to the house, 
Hopefully by Monday, today is Friday, hopefully by Monday, Brandon's household will be a little bit healthier and Brandon will be able to come to work and bring the rock wall and we'll, we'll be able to finish some of the exterior insulation and maybe start to go get some of the drywall. But today is just a little bit of a frustrating day. Also, we still have about a thousand pounds of rocks in the bed of the truck. And so I've got to go move all those rocks out of the bed of the truck before we go get foam. And I think Allie's going to hang out in here and make some breakfast. Obviously Trent feels very passionately about the drywall situation and I don't blame him. I totally understand where the drywall company is coming from that things are super busy right now. And it's totally fine that they can't fulfill our orders. We just wish that they had told us that either when we talked to them initially or like as soon as they realized that they couldn't help us instead of waiting for us to like reach out multiple times, finally get through to someone for us to just realize, oh, they can't help us. So. We're moving on, <laughs> it'll be fine. I think uh, we haven't had breakfast yet either and Trent gets a little hangry. So before we do too much else today, I'm gonna try to fix that by making us something delicious to eat for breakfast. The dogs are absolutely loving it now that it's summer and they can go outside and I feel like almost every time we walk outside, there's literally like deer over here in this little meadow eating all of the fresh vegetation. They want to chase everything, which really has me worried because the deer are terrified. As soon as they hear the jingling and the dogs running, the deer just like hop and they can hop like 40 miles an hour. They're insanely fast. They get away, no problem. The dogs chase them for a minute. And then once they get far enough away, the dogs are like, you know, to heck with it. And they turn around. That's not a problem. Um, what I am worried about is if the dogs chase the moose. I'm afraid that now since they're like this little tag team that if they come across a moose they might try to like chase and, and scare the moose and guess what? The moose are not scared of dogs. The moose will trample the dogs and could hurt them or kill them and we absolutely don't want anything to happen to the dogs so I'm trying to work on recalling them when they're chasing things which worked with the gopher just a second ago. We definitely don't want them to get uh, into a scuffle with a moose. And also I've been seeing porcupines around here lately and the way that these dogs chase every little thing that runs around, I know they'll chase a porcupine and I do not want to have to take them to the vet to get porcupine quills removed out of their mouths. That's just some of the stuff we're dealing with right now. I'm going to head up to the house and grab my sun hat because the sun is really bright today and I'm going to start shoveling these rocks out of the bed of the truck. Got some uh, fun activities for me this morning. sun protection this bag of rocks right here still probably weighs several hundred pounds and I need to put this over here underneath the deck unfortunately I don't have a way of picking it up or moving it but unload the rocks one shovel full at a time into a wheelbarrow and then go and dump them over there so that's what I'm gonna do now We go move uh, several hundred pounds of rocks check Whew. now I'm pretty winded I'm gonna go in and see uh, if Allie's got breakfast ready hopefully she does we can scarf it up and then uh, head to Home Depot and get some exterior foam maybe look at some drywall prices because looks like that's where we're gonna be getting it from probably looks like I only worked for five minutes and maybe it was like 20 minutes, but it was just like, 
a nice way to wake you up. I'm like feeling exhausted after working for 20 minutes, which is mildly embarrassing, but I'm gonna load up on some fuel and we're gonna head to Home Depot. You know, today is just not really going to plan. And it's just one of those days where things don't go your way. And pretty much most of my life, or maybe my entire life, I've usually been like a pretty patient, confident person, but I've always held myself to really high expectations. So I have a high expectations for myself. And that's made me really determined. But if there's one thing that I've learned in the last probably five or 10 years is that you can't let the little things and you can't let the details dictate your mood or stop you from achieving what you're trying to achieve. And I think today is a perfect example of that because Brandon's not able to come up. He can't bring up the rock wool. We're going to get foam right now, but really like today is almost kind of a stalemate as far as like progress on the house goes. And that's just the way the cookie crumbles. It's just kind of the way it is. And we just have to be patient and accepting of that. Keep a positive attitude and get done what we can get done. But just know that if you're living your life right now and you have high expectations for yourself and things aren't going according to plan, it's okay. There's always tomorrow. I, on the other hand, am really excited because this is like a date day with Trent. I get to just kind of come along for the ride and help him way more than normal since Usually I kind of take a step back and let him and Brandon do all the work and it's kind of nice. We haven't been to Home Depot just the two of us in a while. We used to come here just the two of us every day. Yeah, it's true. And uh, I kind of miss those days, but <laughs> it is uh, more proficient when Brandon's here and we can get stuff done and you're always there. It's, it's not true. like you're not there, it's true. but uh, you don't have to get your hands dirty. <laughs> well, at least that is a really good site right here. I was actually really worried that they were going to be completely out of drywall when we got in here because there's such a shortage that LKL can't help any customers out unless they're contractors. So, yeah, so as you can see, Home Depot must have some insane buying power because <laughs> they've got tons and tons and tons of drywall. We probably need at least like three or four of these bunks. They've got quite a bit. So there's some positive news for the day. <laughs> How many do we need? There's 11, we need like 30. Oh boy. Maybe they have more somewhere else? Uh, no. A secret stash or something? Yeah, you'd think that like they'd have some stuff in the back, as people like to call it, but uh, this is the Home back. Depot, there's kind of already in the back, you know? <laughs> Hello, how you doing? I have 11 of these. Start drywall, but we have to wait. <laughs> sheets made it here in one piece now 11 sheets is enough to do half of the back of the house the back of the oh, house nice. needs 20 and then the upper gable up there uh, needs like another seven or eight I think so cool. that was all Home Depot had so, and we can go to some other Home Depots and get more oh what? we oh, got two sheets right there you scared me. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we have 13 sheets. So we have uh, quite a bit and when Brandon shows up with the rest of the rock wool, we'll have enough to do the majority of the back of the house before we need to go to Home Depot and get more foam. Cool. That's gonna take place next week. As far as working on the house, we're probably done for the day. Okay. We are gonna go on a little jaunt and get the dogs some exercise. Just don't mind me as I walk down our freshly carpentered car built, built, <laughs> built stairs. <laughs> Look at that. Ooh. Work it. You can walk down with your eyes closed. I don't suggest that for anyone other than Trent. Living in the mountains is really nice. And even though through the winter, it was super, super challenging to be removing snow and driving through a ski resort, basically. It was pretty challenging, but it's so rewarding. And on a day like today, normally we'd be loading the dogs into the car, driving for 45 minutes or an hour to get to an amazing trailhead where we can get out into nature and really enjoy the outdoors. But since we live up here, all we got to do is walk out our front door and we get to experience the forest and we get to see wildlife and the dogs get exercise, we get exercise, and it's our own backyard. I really could not picture myself living anywhere else. Well, Trent ran off to go do a couple errands in town, and I was going to take you guys along while I cleaned all of Terry and got so much productive stuff done in the trailer and around the trailer since we're not really working on the house today. And instead, I took the most beautiful nap you could ever imagine. I am not an afternoon nap person. I never sleep during the day, and uh, I guess all of that kind of changes when you're pregnant. So. I just passed out for about an hour and a half and I feel incredible. It made a big difference. I felt good this morning, but um, maybe just the thought of cleaning made me really tired and I just immediately fell asleep. So I think we're going to probably not clean Terry today, but we are gonna pack the dogs up into the car and go meet Trent in town. How are your errands? Pretty good. <laughs> How was your evening? I uh, had all these ambitious plans. I was gonna get so much done and I took a nap. A nap! Of course you did. <laughs> it was great. But it's okay, she could take a nap. She's growing a human being. <laughs> well, I guess today wasn't necessarily a productive day as far as building the house goes, but I feel productive. I went and got a little bit of exercise. I had some fun. Ellie took a nap. The I dogs great. were- <laughs> The dogs seem to be mildly exercised. I had a great day. <laughs> yeah. I wish every day could be like this. I know. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed coming along on this adventure. If you did, make sure you show us by giving us a big thumbs up on today's video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks again to Omaze for sponsoring today's video. Click the link in our description to check them out. And we'll see you guys on the next Adios. one. Adios.